says setting up. Hey, everybody. Hey. Hey, everybody. Are you ready for some after lunch special? Well, come yes. on in here. <laughs> come on in here. So um, as you know, Science of Mind Magazine hosts these after lunch specials so that we all can have a little bit of afternoon break. Now, sometimes that may look like a distraction, but not today. Today, it is an afternoon special that is going to give you an after lunch special that's going to give you the opportunity to take a little break, have a little fun. And uh, I can hardly hold myself still in my chair. So if you've ever participated in one of the Science of My Magazine's after lunch specials, after lunch times together, conversations, interviews, then I want you in the chat to write yes or a, a why. Let us know that this is not your first time. But if it is your first time, then type that in first time with an exclamation mark. And I want to welcome you. My name is Tracy Brown. And I do really want to welcome you to this conversation today. I'm a practitioner at CSL Dallas. I'm the moderator of the public Facebook group, What is Mine to Do? And as many of you know, I'm a really active volunteer with Centers for Spiritual Living and a recipient of the Ernest Holmes Award. And what I get today to do is to introduce you to Trey Anthony. She's a playwright, an actress, a comedian, a coach. She's a speaker. She's an author, an entrepreneur. She was born in England. She's a living legend in Canada. And now she resides in Atlanta, Georgia. So there's no way I can cover all of that with her in 20 to 25 minutes. So I really want you to feel like you know her. So first, welcome, Trey. Hey. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to do this. Thank you ever so much, Tracy. Oh, you are amazing. And you are that example of someone who, like, you don't have one lane. Your lane is an eight-lane highway, right? <laughs> That's right. You can't, um, you can't contain me. That's what, what I say. I, I do it all and I do it all well. That's what I'm hoping for by, you know, the sake of the universe, just to do it all and just be happy with everything that I'm doing. So if people were to get a sense of you from your perspective, what three words would you use to describe who you are in the 21st century, who you are today in 2020? Oh, I would definitely say I'm a new thought thinker. Um, I would say I'm innovative. And I would say I'm a creative, creative entrepreneur. That's, I think that that's what I would say. Yeah. That is really powerful. And it means so much more than a lot of the labels, right? So I can use all those labels and they are true. That yeah. they, they describe you, they're adjectives. Mm -hmm. But you just described gives us a sense of from your from the inside out, like how yep. you see yourself. And I can say from what I know about you that I would say yes, yes, and yes. All three of those phrases identify you. So you already know, like many people, I first learned about you as the creative genius behind the play The Kink in Our Hair. Mm -hmm. And that play, for people who aren't familiar with the play, that play was a huge hit in Canada, then in England, and now it's a very popular production at repertory theaters throughout the U.S. and I'm sure other places in the world, which is how I got to see it maybe about four years ago. Uh, but then that play became the foundation for, let's see if I can get this right the first comedy series that was broadcast on in prime time on a mainstream broadcast station that was is the first one that was both created by and starring black women in Canada. Did I get that right? You got that right, Tracy. Very good. Yes. So yes, we were the first, the first 
ever all black cast and female produced show on a primetime Canadian network. Yes. So we and made history or her story, I like to say. Yeah. <laughs> and most of us think, well, that that means that just happened like in your lifetime, right? Like didn't that happen 20 or 40 or 100? No, oh. no, 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 no. It was about nine years ago. Yeah, eight to nine years. Canada, we have to do a little bit of catching up in regards to diversity on our TV and also adding diversity to the mainstream. So we weren't as advanced as Americans have tended to be where you guys had the Jeffersons, the Cosby show and was it good times and all of that. We just were not used to seeing people of color on TV in Canada. So um, the kink was really groundbreaking for that reason because so many of us just weren't used to seeing people of color on TV. Well, um, I think that Canadian TV got a real shift because it wasn't just like one person. And not only were the, the actors and the characters representing so many different aspects of being someone who's Black, but also the stories themselves, right? The stories and the episodes really featured this mix of life from many cultures. So mm -hmm. Canada, from Jamaica, from, you know, the US, yes. from the world. Exactly. So I love that. What did you learn during that period of your life? Like we can look at it and say, ooh, ooh, I'm talking to a celebrity. Ooh, yeah. she's like important. But what did you learn during that period of your life that shaped who you have become today? I think what I learned is really that when you walk in your truth and if you walk in your power, nothing can stop you. I think for someone like me, um, all of the odds were stacked against me, it seemed, right? Um, I was black, I'm queer, I grew up working class. I came from a very working class neighborhood in um, Toronto, Canada. I grew up in Toronto housing, which is quote unquote, the projects. My mom had me at age 17. And so for someone like me to then have their own TV show on a national network in Canada really was kind of like, wow. <laughs> and so for me, it's always been about um, just having a belief that anything is possible. And if you put it out to the universe, like it will deliver on time and when it's your time. And I think for me, it also was about having a level of tenacity and also audacity that I didn't believe the lies that people told me about myself or told me someone like you could not do that. And so I've always kind of walked through the world of just kind of being like, um, God's got this and I got this and that's the only person I'm listening to right about now. <laughs> so when you're walking with a sense of purpose, you just know that anything is possible for you in your life. Yes. And so many people think they know that because they can speak the words and describe mm -hmm. it, mm -hmm. but having actually the lived experience mm -hmm. of, wow, this can really be, I set an intention and yes. I believe it and I have faith in myself and in the ways that the universe works and wow. The, more yeah. than I, I'm guessing, more than you ever imagined. More so, definitely. Um, I'd love to tell you this story, Tracy. Many years ago, before the TV show happened, um, and the TV show was based on the play "The Kink in My Hair," and I was walking past um, the Princess of Wales Theatre, which is our biggest commercial theatre um, in Canada, and they do like shows like The Lion King. Um, you know, all of the big, big shows, Hairspray and everything like that. And I was walking past there with a friend and I had never written anything in my life, never. And as I was walking past, I said, one day my play is going to be in this theater, a 2000 seat theater, who had never even produced a Canadian play, much less a little black girl's play, right? And my friend nearly just died laughing. And, but I went home and I wrote it down and I kept saying, it's going to be at the Princess of Wales Theatre. And I would say probably about eight years after that day, 
we got the call that Mervish wanted to produce um, my play at the Princess of Wales Theatre. And that was the first Canadian production that had ever been produced at the Princess of Wales Theatre. And so for me, I'm a big believer about setting your intentions and just knowing it's going to happen and just keep, you know, reminding yourself and reminding the universe, okay, this is what's gonna happen. But that's how it went. And I've always been a big believer in that. Yes, we, we teach, place your order and the universe yes. will respond, act in accordance with that. So like when you, when you made that first intention, you hadn't written anything. So yeah, there was something for you to do. You needed to write yes. a play. <laughs> yes, I just sat right? there and you they needed, called me. <laughs> you needed to write a play so that all of the other things, that was your part. The universe yes. took care of everything else. You know, it's so easy to celebrate the successes, but I'm guessing you've also experienced some lows in your life. What have you learned from some of the lows, some of the times when things didn't seem to be um, unfolding the way that you wanted them to? That What did you learn from the lows that have also shaped who you've become today? For me, in the low times, I've always gone back to the thing of what lesson do I need to learn from this? What am I supposed to take from this? How did I contribute to this? And why is this happening right now? And what do I need to gain from this? And also one of the biggest things that I've always done is I've always given myself 24 hours of what I call disappointment, grief, anger, yelling and saying, oh, life isn't fair. This is this, this is that. And after 24 hours, I'm like, okay, what are we doing next? What's the plan B? And if there's anything that I've learned in my life is that sometimes the plan B is so much more better than the plan A. And it always shocks me and surprises me that things that I thought that I needed at that given moment, it always becomes something much more greater than I could even ever imagine. And so that's why I really try my best not to sit and dwell in the disappointment. I'm always like, there's something that the universe is trying to teach me or give me more time or know that I'm not ready. And so every time I always say a prayer, my prayer usually is, um, God, if not this, then better, whatever you think is better for me. And so I trust that process. So I don't dwell in the disappointment for too long. Yeah, that's beautiful. And so often, I, I agree with you, you know, anyone who reads the magazine or follows Science of Mind in mm -hmm. centers or any other way knows that sometimes what is disappointing or feels like failure, like we, we're so accustomed to saying delay is not denial. And sometimes mm -hmm. the thing that doesn't work is purposefully being moved out of the way to open the door to something else. But I, I want to emphasize what you just shared, that you give yourself permission to feel what you feel. Yes, yes. And yes. I think that's important. Like you have to acknowledge the disappointment. You have to acknowledge the hurt. And you have to, and I think especially sometimes um, as a Black woman, I've been raised by women who are like, you gotta be strong. There's no need to be vulnerable. You don't have time to cry about it. So that is something that has been a real thing that I have enforced in my life of no, you actually can sit with this hurt. You actually can cry. And it's okay to say, I don't have all the answers and I'm hurt about it. So that is something that has been a real learning lesson for me. Um, I would say in the last few years of being able to acknowledge grief and disappointment in my life. Yeah, everything you're saying sure resonates with what we teach in Science of Mind. Uh, were you exposed to new thought principles when you were growing up? You know, it's so funny. I don't think my grandmother had the language. I grew up with my grandmother around saying this was new thought thinking, but my grandmother used to always say, you got to be positive about it. And um, one of the things I always thought, and um, I write about this in my book, is I was born, when I was born with a baby, I was born with three gray hairs in my ha ha head. And amongst all of this hair, there was three gray hair. And my grandmother always said to me, that means you are marked by God and God is always with you. So God is going to take care of you. 
So I always walked through the world as this little girl going, God's got me, right? And so I just walked through the world going, because I'm marked by God, right? And then she would always say, you're lucky because you have three gray hairs and that means luck. So I was like, I'm lucky and God's got me. And that's how I walked through the world. And so I think she gave me the language to affirm that at all times. And so it wasn't like her saying, this is new thought thinking, but she really instilled in me that Trey, you are blessed by God and you are a lucky person because you got three gray hairs in your head. So I kind of walked through the world, just kind of like, I don't know what you know about yourself, but I know I'm blessed and I know I'm lucky. <laughs> so every parent and every grandparent and every aunt and uncle, everyone who is around small children is going to today, look for yes. something that they can tell that child, you are marked by God, you, God has got you, right? Something that's so unique to them that they are too young to realize that everyone, mm -hmm. right, everyone, everyone has been created <laughs> for greatness. So, um, wow. Um, so, you are really exposed, but you do have a connection to new thoughts. Oh, yes, now. definitely. Um, I used to do, um, I've been mentored by Dr. Barbara King, um, who just recently passed, um, was a great mentor to me when I moved to Atlanta. Actually, a week before she passed, she sent me an email um, just giving me some guidance and good wishes around my book. And um, I also went to um, the Center of Spiritual Living in Canada, and that's where I met your one of your editors, Sonia Byrne. And so I've always been a teacher and a, a student. And then, of course, I've been a big believer of Louise Hay. And when I read um, You Can Heal Your Life, it absolutely changed my life. I gave away You Can Heal Your Life books, like how people give away candy at Halloween. I kept saying, you've got to read this. You've got to read this. And so I grew up a lot. Um, with the um, You Can Heal Your Life, Dwayne Dyer's, uh, Wayne Dyer's books, I, I've always been a big thinker. And um, even now, my book, Black Girl in Love with Herself, I used to go to so many Hay House conferences and attend every single workshop. And now my new book is coming under Hay House. And so um, I'm a big believer in new thought thinking. I've always studied. I also went to... Um, Agape sometimes and, and Michael Beckwith and all of those people. So yes, definitely. It's always been a huge influence in my life. So I know a lot of people who are watching or listening to this conversation are just being introduced to you. But by that, I want to encourage everybody to just recognize Trey Anthony is family. And so just because you're, you're meeting her for the first time today, uh, uh, she's family. And so, um, and I hope you, if you're watching, I hope you like me feel like, wow, yeah, there's this connection that's so real. Mm -hmm. But we only have a few minutes left. I oh my gosh. Talk so about, I do mm -hmm. want to talk about the book. So, so, so the book title is Black Girl in Love with Herself. But you've got an entire brand, Black Girl in Love with Herself. So could you in two or three minutes kind of summarize what that means and also tell people about the book? Yeah. What it means is for you to be a woman who believes in self-love. It's about how can you live your best damn life possible and really about walking through the world with a sense of purpose and intention. That's what the brand is all about. And um, when I got the book deal through Hay House, it was based on a article that I had written for Huffington Post called, If I Was a Black Girl in Love with Myself. And it was a really vulnerable piece where I had written in all of the ways I had shown up in my life and not been 
really just taking care of myself or expecting someone else to love me when I wasn't loving myself in the right way. And so in the piece, I just said, you know, and I'm just going to paraphrase it very quickly. Like if I was a black girl in love with myself, I would, you know, take time to rest. I would be more vulnerable. I would forgive my mother for um, not loving me in the way that I wanted to be loved. I would forgive my father. I would go to therapy. I would, you know, take long baths. I would let go of guilt. I would let go of failure. And um, it was really about just manifesting love and care and tenderness in your life. And so when um, Hay House approached me, they approached me around writing this book, really geared at how do you, of course, you know, as women, we have a similar path, but there's also a very uniqueness, um, something very unique about walking through the world as a black woman. And so they asked me to really talk about that and the lessons that I've learned. And one of the things I, I talked about just um, before is being raised by very two very strong, powerful women and learning from them this message that you always had to be strong, you always had to be powerful. And I wasn't, I didn't know how to take care of myself in that. And so this book is just a learning lesson of how. I started to offer self-love to myself, how I offered it to clients that I coach and the valuable lesson of like when your whole life blows up in your face. And, and it's funny, right after getting the book deal, my relationship of five years ended and I was left with a three week old baby. And here I was writing a book about how to find love. <laughs> and I was just like, oh my God. And I think it was the universe's way of saying, okay, you want to talk about love? Let's see what you're going to do with this now, right? Because I felt anything but love. And so I truly believe this happened so I could write this book from that place of really digging deep and saying, how did I miss this? How did I miss this tsunami? What was coming towards me in my life thinking I had this quote unquote perfect relationship and now I'm here basically homeless with a three week old baby talking about love and I feel very far removed from love right now. And that that authenticity right because writing the book as you are reminding yourself yeah of what it really takes has got to be powerful. So I want to let everybody know that the book, Black Girl in Love, it doesn't, uh, in love with herself, doesn't really come out until January, but you can pre-order it yes. now. And you can pre-order yes. it everywhere. I mean, yes. th there are links on Amazon and Random House and Barnes and Noble and even Target.com, right? Yes. <laughs> I mean, everybody you can order sells it books. anywhere you want, yes. Right. Anyway. Anybody who sells books, and if you want to stay connected to Trey, um, what would you prefer them to do? What's the best way? Instagram, Facebook, Instagram. I'm, I'm at Black Girl in Love on Instagram. You can also um, my website treyanthony.com, and that's T R E Y Anthony.com. I'm also on Facebook. I have a Trey Anthony fan page. Um, so I'm not so great on Twitter. So I have something on Twitter, but I'm not that great on it. So I would definitely say Instagram, Facebook, and through my website. I'd love to still stay connected with everyone. And you can order the book through my website as well. So Trey, all my goal was, was to introduce people to you. And, uh, you. I, and of course, a little bit of, I always want to have this you know, like connection. So we take 25 minutes, have a quick connection. And, yes. And yes, um, I officially, officially yes. claim that you are a member of our Science of Mind magazine family. Our Science Thank of you. And we will be looking for more great, great things to come from you and through you. Thanks so much for being with us this afternoon. Thank you so much for having me. I loved it every single minute of it. So thank you for giving me this opportunity. And if you're at Facebook, did you enjoy it? Put it in the chat. Yes. Next time. For sure. Thanks, Tracy.